Hi, this is Ioni with Eve's Garden Handmade Soaps and I was going to do some hot process soap today. I'm making a batch of soap for my daughter's university for their, um, I guess it's a time for new students to come and see what's available at the college and she is sponsoring a booth about the internet and their connection with it. And we're going to give away these little soaps that I'm going to make. I'm doing the second batch today and I'm doing hot process because I only have two weeks to get them ready. And I ran into such turmoil yesterday with the first batch that I've tried to come up with some new solutions to make it a little easier today. And so I'm going to share those with you. And uh, so let's get started. This is the batch that I'm working with today. It's a basic coconut oil, olive oil, and a soy oil recipe. And I prepared it and then put it in the crock pot. It's been cooking about a half an hour. But as you can see, it's drying out a little around the edges as it's starting to turn. And to prevent this and having big clumps of white dried out chunks inside, I'm going to spray it with some water just around the edges. I've just filled up this um, plastic squirt bottle with water and it's not a good idea to leave the lid off very long while it's cooking, especially for the first turn. So I'm going to do this very quickly. Just spray a little bit around the edges. It's been cooking about a half hour now, so we'll keep our eye on it, and I'll show you all the steps as we progress. Oh, I, I want to show you these other really neat things I got at the Goodwill yesterday after I had such a problem uh, keeping it the consistency good. I found this old antique whip, and the wiring on it is really strong. And I'm hoping that's going to help me with uh, keeping the batch nice and mixed today. And I also found this nice heavy wood, it's a, a wok spatula that I think I'm going to use today. I had trouble with one of my plastic spoons melting, so I looked for alternative tools to use. While we're waiting, um, I'll show you the ones that I made yesterday. Uh, the school colors are white and blue, so I made these, um, I cut these in half. Originally they were, they look like this, but um, they've got white flecks in, in with a kind of a clay blue color that looks really pretty. I cut them in half so that they're more like little guest size soap since they're going to be given away. But I spent all day on them and I was hoping to make it a little easier today. Well, it's been another half hour and <clears throat> as you can see, uh, it's starting to turn. I'd say about it's about halfway done cooking. So we will check again in probably an hour. I'm going to keep an eye on it every 10 minutes. I did squirt it one more time so far, and so I'm just keeping you posted as to the process. This is the um, color I'm going to be using. I mixed together uh, on Marie from TT Soap's suggestion some glycerin. I usually just use olive oil, but she suggested glycerin and olive oil, so I tried that today. I used ultramarine blue, a little bit of brown oxide to take the uh, some of the blue away because I wanted a little more subtle blue, and then some titanium dioxide. And I mixed this all together. Actually, I used my little um, frother to do it. I really love that. And then the scent I'm going to be putting in is this. Sandalwood Vanilla. 
and uh, my daughter and a friend of hers from the school picked this out and it's a wonderful scent. It is a fragrance oil and I got it at the soap making bar in Bellingham, Washington where they attend school at Western and Washington University and that's the school that's going to be uh, getting these soaps. I'm going to measure the oil out. I'm just going to use an ounce for this recipe and I'll be measuring that out when it's closer to the time to put it in. And what I like to do is heat up the microwave about 45 seconds and then put it in after the microwave's done just because it stays warm in there for a while and it heat, seems to heat the oils up that I'm going to add just enough so that they don't uh, make the soap go solid too fast. And we'll be doing those things later on. It's been another half hour and we're getting closer to having it completely turn. There's just a small part in the middle yet that has to go. I'm going to spray it one last time. I sprayed it once in between. So it'll be about five sprays altogether, I guess. But you can see that it's drying a little bit on the top and I'm just going to give it an overall spray. Very lightly. And that's going to do it. We'll leave it for another probably half hour. Okay, this is uh, pretty turn now. There's just a small portion in the middle. It's not. Oh, I just got my glasses steamed up. So I am going to give it a stir. There's still several dried chunks in there that I hope to had hoped to avoid. I'm going to turn the uh, temperature down from high to low and whip this really good so it's all stirred up now I'm going to check it oh this whip works really good I'm going to check it now for lye consistency. I use this uh, see if I can say this right phenophthalene solution. It turns the lye bright pink if it's any trace of it left in the soap. There's still a little bit of pink there so I'm going to have to cook it a little longer. Not too long probably though. So I'll give it one last stir and then put the lid back on. I had thought another thing I would do is pick pick out some of the larger dried out chunks and uh, grate them back into the soap. So I'm going to try that this time too, as well as keeping it moist while it's cooking. So we'll let it cook a little longer and then be back. 